Hello guys, uh, today we're going to continue going over 6.4 example 2, working with partial fractions. Now make sure you listen to, after the class I have the homework assignment and also a message just to clear a couple things up, make sure you watch those. Uh, but right now let's go into the class first. Uh, first of all, yesterday we were working with this expression. Now notice that the numerator is the first degree and the denominator is of second degree. That means it's a proper fraction. M just like regular numbers, regular fractions. If the denominator is bigger than the numerator, it's a proper fraction. If the numerator is bigger, it is an improper fraction. Or also, you know, the same number. This would actually be a four. So in order for, we, in order for us to work with a proper fraction, the numerator's degree has to be bigger than the denominator's degree. If we look at example two, I notice that the degree of my, of my numerator is identical to the degree of my denominator. In order to work with proper uh, with partial fractions, we have to have proper fractions. So the way to actually work with this, it's very simple. All the processes that we did yesterday are exactly the same with one extra process added, which you know, and it's easy, it's long division. In order to turn this improper fraction to a proper fraction, all I have to do is long division. I divide my numerator by my denominator. And remember, for the people who forgot, long division. All you have to do is always focus on the first terms of the dividend and the divisor. And ask yourself, what is this term? What do I have to multiply to this term for me to end up with this term? And in this case, it's the number two. You put a two up here, and then you multiply this entire expression by the number two, and you change the sign. Two times x squared is two x squared. Two times negative x, negative two x. And I think I copied this incorrectly. I think that's a five. Yeah, this is a five. Sorry about that. This is actually a five. Wouldn't change much, but let's use the exact same numbers we have in the book so you can verify. Um, after you change the, after you multiply, we change the signs. So this becomes negative, this becomes positive. Now I add, this goes away, which is the whole point. This becomes seven X minus four. Now notice I can no longer continue doing long division because the degree here is bigger than the degree here. So I'm done doing long division. Now I'm gonna rewrite this expression as the answer that I got here. So I'm gonna get two plus the remainder, seven X minus four divided by x squared minus x. I don't need this anymore. So again, using long division, all I did was rewrite this expression as this expression. It's the same thing. Now the number two, you can forget about it till the very end. We're not gonna use it anymore. But when we're giving the final answer, you do have to put that number two. I'm gonna focus on the remainder part. Now if you notice, the degree the numerator is smaller than the degree in the denominator. Same thing we did yesterday from now on. I'm gonna rewrite this as seven X minus four over X squared minus X. I'm gonna rewrite that as the addition of two fractions. An A goes here, a B goes here. I'm gonna factor my denominator, common factor, X, X minus one, common factor. I'm gonna put one of the factors here and the other factor here. Same thing we did yesterday. In order to isolate this portion, I'm gonna get rid of my denominator here and cross multiply. A times this and B times this, so I'm gonna end up with this expression. My A multiplied my X minus one and my B multiplied my X. I'm gonna distribute the X and then group like terms. So again, I'm gonna rewrite this as AX minus A plus BX, just multiply. Now I'm gonna put my terms together, seven X minus four equals, this A has an X, this B has an X, and this A is by itself. Now I can erase all of this. 
Now remember, I'm gonna do my matrix. I'm gonna group these two, and they both have X's, and this one does not have an X, it's alone. So I'm gonna use these two to find my X value, and I'm gonna use this one to find my constant. Now note, sometimes you're gonna end up with something that looks like this. A plus B equals seven, negative A equals negative four. You could turn this into an augmented matrix and use Gaussian elimination, you can use Kramer's rule. You can use any way you want to solve this matrix. However, since you have, in this case, there's only a single variable with a single value, you know what that value is. So in these cases, it's always best to substitute. Again, remember, I never, ever, ever, ever suggest substitution unless they give you a case like this, one variable, one value. Because now I know if I multiply this entire row by negative one, this becomes positive, this becomes positive. I know that my A is four because it's a given. And when you substitute your four here and isolate your B, I know that my B is three. So again, in this case, yeah, I do substitution, it's way easy. If they were to give me a number, another number here, I would not do substitution, I do elimination. So now that I have my A and my B, all I have to do is write my answer, including the original two. Can't forget that value. So I have the original two, and then my fractions. I had A plus B, X, X minus one. I substitute my A for four, and my B for three, and I am done. That was example two, same as example one, we're only including long division. Normally, you can only do long division. You will probably not get synthetic division. Now for homework, page 402, I want you to do from nine to 12, only four. The factoring patterns you will see there are just grouping and standard standard form, you know, just trinomials. Um, two things I wanna clear up real, real quick. We will have math every day, Monday through Thursday, and Fridays is just practice and video conference days. So even if your schedule does not say that you don't have math, I confirmed this yesterday. Even if your schedule does not say you have math class, we do have math class. That schedule is just to limit the classes early in the morning. Math class does not have a proper schedule. You can do, you can see the video whenever you want and turn in homework before 10. So we do have math class every day. The second question that I wanna address is a question that came up in 10th grade about exams. Now note, I am hoping that we will see, our, you know, we'll see ourselves soon if it's, safe and healthy for everybody. There is a chance we might not go back to school. I think it's a small chance, but it's still there. Now, I'm gonna wait one or one week, probably until the end of next week, see how the situation plays out. The reason I do not wanna do take home tests is because I do not like group exams, okay? <laughs> if I do a take home test, I'm pretty sure, even though you guys are pretty smart, I said so you guys are pretty smart, I think that you guys are smart enough to also maybe share some information. So if I were to give take home tests, they would be very long, very difficult, and strictly timed, very limited time, in order for you to be able to complete the work and not have time to share. And I don't like that. So I don't like giving long, difficult, very strictly timed tests. But if it's a take home test, that's what you're gonna have to do. So make sure you do the homework every day. Cause again, if we don't see ourselves back this school year, and again, no one's told me anything. No one said anything. We're waiting to see if we can reopen the school. Okay? Pero, and I'm hoping we can see each other so we can do, you know, tests presenciales. Uh, but if that's the case, the tests will be long, they will be difficult, they will be strictly timed. So make sure you do all the homework to balance out that difficulty. 
Do not miss a single homework, please. I'm telling you, there might not be any notebook grade this quarter. There might not be quizzes in the, you know, formatives in the actual sense. We'll see how that works. We'll see how this plays out. But make sure you do your work. Make sure you study every day. Make sure you ask questions if you're not understanding. I've had a couple of video conferences with students. That's awesome. Make sure you're understanding everything. If we have tests, again, it's not going to be very, very as relaxed as the tests are at school. They will be just not that nice. Okay. So let's see how that plays out. Um, again, tests, I went over the test and schedule. You have math every day. Besides that, have a great day. You guys are doing pretty well. Most of you, like 95% of the time, you're turning in the homework. And I'm assuming you guys are understanding the class because I've had very few video conference calls. And, you know, the videos are pretty straightforward. So if you have any questions, let me know. Otherwise, tomorrow we're going to do examples three and four. Friday video conference day. And maybe Monday we'll get into vectors, which is a class I've never taught other students. So we're going to do pretty cool. It's going to be pretty cool, actually. Um, so take care.